I had 14 siblings and I've lost some to, to war and now we're only eight of us. My family and I immigrated to Canada in 2006. We lost our parents at a very young age. I lost my dad when I was three, so I never really met my dad with that. I lost my mom when I was seven years old. Uh, I remember seeing the whole, I remember seeing people, I remember hearing people just come in the house and take her away. And uh, I guess that's kind of where my story began. We were in the room, we're, she was actually praying for us. Myself, my two brothers, and my sister were in the room and she's praying for us. And we heard gunshots. And the gunshots were pretty, pretty strong. And my mom, she kept, she continued on praying. And then when she was done praying, we heard people just bust into the house. And immediately, my brothers and I, we ran into my sister's room and we hid under the bed. And when my sister stayed in the room with her, and we just heard noise. We heard our mom say, please don't take my children away. Do whatever you want to do to me, but please don't take my children away. And in a few seconds, we heard her. We heard them take her out of the room. And someone came into the room that we were staying in. We were under the bed. It was at least five of us under the bed hiding. And my sisters were like holding our mouth, like my brothers and I, because we were young and they didn't want us to make any noise just holding us really tight. I remember just being under there, under the bed, and being so scared. We see a man walk in, and he grabs a suitcase, doesn't look under the bed, doesn't do anything else, and just walks out of the room and just leaves the house. And uh, that's what happened. We just don't even know where they took our mother until the next day we heard that our mom passed away, that our mom was killed during that whole thing the night before. And I think that's where it went down for me. I lost hope. I didn't know what to do. I'm experiencing that and seeing all of it so traumatic to me. We immigrated here in 2006 and it was still hard for me. It was still hard just not having parents, not having the, the mother figure or the father figure. I remember in grade six hearing other kids say, oh my mom, my dad. I remember it used to affect you so much because I didn't have that opportunity to call mom and dad. Those words were dead to me before I could even enjoy saying the word. And I carried that throughout from elementary to high school. I carried that whole inside of me. Uh, school was very, very hard for me. We moved around so many, so many times that I never had the opportunity to be in one spot and just continue school. So school was really hard for me. I remember teachers telling me, you don't have a future, I'm sorry about your grades and everything, the way it looks, you have no future. There's like, you can't even go to university. I think maybe after grade 12, that's it for you. It didn't even hurt me that much because you know, holding up so much in me that that was just another add-on. I asked God to take my life away. I said, I don't want to be alive anymore. I, I don't want to be here. I don't know why I'm here. Everything I do is so wrong and I'm being hurt so much. And it's just, it was too much for me. Every time I think about being under that bed, that's why I serve God. Knowing that he saved us through under the bed. There was five of us under the bed, under the bed. Like anything could have happened. That person that walked in the room could have grabbed us or could have looked under, but nothing happened to us. We came out alive and that's why I serve the God that I do. The other reason why I serve him is the woman that raised me, my mother. She was a woman of faith. She was a woman of prayer. I knew that I had to carry that on the inside of me because I wouldn't let any, everything else die. I mean, she died. I didn't have any, any small piece of her. The only thing that I had was to carry her faith. Watching my mother spend time with God, pray, pray for us, and always making sure that we knew who this God was, that was it for me, and that's why I keep the faith. My dad. I didn't even know my dad. I mean, I lost my dad when I was three years old. Everything that I know about him is really stories that my siblings tell me. For the longest time, I actually hated my dad. I hated him so much for, for leaving, hating him for not being around. Who am I gonna come to when I need to talk about boys? For the longest time, I didn't talk about my dad and sometimes it still takes me a while to talk about my dad because he wasn't around when I was growing up. He wasn't there. The only person that I saw was my mother and I saw what, how much my mother did and he just wasn't there, so I hated him for the longest time. 
I can't I can't call it a season. The season is something that happens within two months or three months. How am I gonna go and talk to my brother about missing my mom? How am I gonna go talk to my sister? I couldn't talk to her. I couldn't. How could I talk to her about like my father or anything? She also felt the same way. So I didn't have that. I didn't have anyone to really speak to. When you talk about the season, I was in a whole long season for I can't even imagine how many years I went through that from elementary to high school. I went through that, so it was, I don't even know if I'd call it a season. Knowing who my mother was and knowing who my mother served, God played a big role in my life because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be standing here. Each and every day that I'm alive is such a blessing and that's what kept me going and also my siblings, my little brother mostly. I moved to Ottawa in 2015 and I started going to TLC and something shifted inside of me. I started feeling a God, I started having something. In 2016, um, TLC, they have um, an encounter and I went. An encounter is 72 hours in the presence of God where you have no cell phone, you have nothing, you're literally there to pray. And the first thing I said the first night to myself was, God, if you are real, show me yourself. I want to know you. I want to see you. Do something that will show me that you're real. I remember this, the second night, he broke me down. He, he really, really broke me down. He healed me from every every spirit, everything in me. He healed me. I remember um, he brought every memory of my parents, every memory of going to the grave for my mom and all of that. And he healed me. And from there, it's when the light started shining my light. I was sleeping and the Holy Spirit woke me up in the morning and said, I want you to start a talk show. This is exactly what you will do. And I was like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do, a talk show. I'm not even a speaker. I don't speak. I'm, not, I'm so shy, I'm so timid. And he said, don't worry about that. I will do everything else. You will do, you, you will have a talk show. He showed me exactly how it would go. And that's, that was the life for me. And that's why I have to serve the God that I serve. Because he has shown himself to me who he really is. And that's my story. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I hope that my story will impact you in some way. Or change your life in some way. Or you can relate your story to my story. Thank you so much once again. You can subscribe, like, and share 